welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. And before we get into today's video, we've got a fantastic announcement about the latest online Yellow Belt course that we've just released. If you go below this video, you will see the link that will take you straight to that Yellow Belt course and it will also give you access to a 24 hour limited discount offer on the price of this course. This material contains all the techniques that I use 90% of the time with my clients. If you want to start to become a world class technical problem solver, this isn't just a certificate, this is world class skills buried in this course, then this is the course for you. We are delivering some of the best skills online anywhere in the world. Click on the link, get the best Yellow Belt course you'll ever see right now. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, what we're going to take a look at is how our software of choice, SPC Excel, deals with the three main probability distributions. So that's what we're going to take a look at. SPC Excel. SPC Excel and probability. Now, of course, the three main probability distributions that you get at work are, of course, the binomial You get the binomial, you get the Poisson, and you get the normal. And that's why we're going to cover these three distributions in particular. There are other probability distributions that you deal with when you're in a, in a business, but the ones that tend to exist in every business and are very common are these three. These three probability distributions also exist when you're calculating sample size, they exist in hypothesis testing, they exist in statistical process control. So this type of data is very common and even if you don't use the probability calcs in the clean, discrete way that we're going to describe it, probability is all around you. So typically, of course, you create the binomial any time you look at a process and measure something as pass-fail. So that's very common. The normal distribution is any time you measure something. So if you, are, if you are a food packing company and you measure the grams of the chocolate bar that you make and it's 23 grams, 23.2 grams, 24 grams, 24.1 grams, you're measuring it, you're going to create the normal. And then finally the Poisson, well the Poisson is a bit more special. Uh, the, the Poisson has an arrival rate. So if you were a, if you were processing refuse at a municipal uh, centre where you take in lorry loads of refuse, and you were talking about lorries delivering per day or lorries delivering per hour, then when you have got that type of data coming at you, you are typically generating the Poisson distribution. Now, why do we want you to, to, to look at these three distributions? Why do we want you to look at probability? Because it's the difference between observation versus maybe the actual results and what I mean by that if you sample out of your process judge it as pass fail you make an observation you see a defect rate of 1% what do you assume that your process is actually delivering? 
1%. You are reacting to the observation. And that may not be true. Probability is a very slippery customer. And if you react to the observation, you use your gut reactions and react to simple static data, you will often make some very bad decisions. So let's get into the probability, work our way through these three distributions and take a look at how SPC Excel works out the results from the three main probability distributions. Okay, well this time what we're going to take a look at is the binomial distribution. How does SPC Excel work with the binomial? So that's the first one we're going to take a look at, the binomial. Now with all of these probability distributions, what you're going to need is parameters. So pieces of information that tell you the basics of what's going on. And the other thing you're going to need, you're going to need um, a, a question to answer. Okay, so we'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at that in a second. Now in the binomial, the, there are two parameters. N, which is basically your sample size. How many results are you actually looking at? And the other parameter is P, which is often known as the probability of success. Now for us, that is probably your reject rate. Okay, so in other words, you're gonna take a sample and you're asking the question, What's the probability that I'm actually going to find a defect if a defect is really present? It's that type of it's that type of question. And then of course you've got to have a question. You've got to have a question to answer. So let's just come up with a little a little scenario, and then we'll we'll look at N and P, and then we'll look at the question that you've got to create. So the the problem we're going to look at is let's say you have a supplier. And by the way, this doesn't, this doesn't have to be an external process. This could be an internal process. Let's say you've got a, an internal piece of equipment um, and you are expecting a 1% defect rate from this process. That's what normally happens. That's what's been promised, okay? And in order to confirm that this is happening, you've decided to sample from this process. And your sample is 100 pieces. Okay, so if you look at this, N in this case is 100. P, our probability of success, is 0 0.01, okay, so we don't want it as 1%, we want it as a decimal, 0 0.01, so that's N and P. So what would we, we'd be interested in knowing about this process? Well, how about this? If there really is a 1% defect rate in the box that I'm sampling, and I take 100 pieces, what's the probability I will see, let's say, zero or one, defects. Okay, so the question we need to answer is the probability that in 100 pieces we see uh, less than equal to one defects. In other words, what's the probability that I will actually confirm that my process is brilliant? So we've got N, 
we've got we got N, we got P, and we know what we're looking for. So why don't we go to the software and have a look how SPC deals with this on the screen. Okay, so here we are on the Sigma Zone menu. Uh, we've done uh, videos before about the analysis diagrams, etc. Um, what we're going to do this time though, we're going to be looking at discrete distributions and continuous distributions. So the binomial is a discrete distribution because you can only have discrete numbers, one defects, two defects, three defects. If I drop the menu down, you can see binomials at the top. So if I click on that, it comes up with this window. And now, of course, we can put the parameters in from our problem. So our problem said that we got a sample size of 100, a defect rate, and therefore a probability of success of 0.01, and we want it to be less than or equal to one. So the reason why we wrote that down before we started is so that we can go to the correct answer. Now you can see there's five answers there, but the, let's have a look, the, the, there we go. The third one on the list, less than or equals to one, is 73 percent less than or equals to one is 73 percent okay so we can put that on the board so what's the probability of being less than or equal to one seventy three percent so seventy three percent of the time the process is delivering this result so it's delivering this result and 73% of the time, we are going to think that it is delivering that result. But what this means, of course, is the opposite is true of this. That 27% of the time, we're going to see above one defect. Now, what that means, of course, is by observation, you think the process isn't performing correctly by observation. But it's going to do that naturally anyway. And this is the point about probability. It messes with your decision making every single day. You have two choices on how to look at this. You can look at the observation and see it's above one defect in a hundred and therefore I'm seeing in my sample more than a 1% defect rate. That must tell me that something's wrong. Or what you can do is you can be a bit more intelligent, look below, below the numbers and realize that that's probably going to happen almost a third of the time when you're sampling this process and it's nothing necessarily to worry about. Now the way people deal with this, by the way, is to use things like sampling tables where the sampling tables tell you how to behave. And what they do is they use these particular problems of the difference between your observation and what's really there. They help to give you good advice as to whether to sample a little bit more often, just to make sure, sample a little bit less when you get a bit more confident, and also perhaps what your reaction should be. So they would probably, sampling tables would probably say, you know, if you see two defects, don't panic. You know, but if you see three, four or five defects, that's a different let scale of problem. Here's what you should do. So sampling tables are great ways to deal with this. But at the heart of what's going on, of course, whenever you do pass fail, the binomial is in play think about the difference between your observation and what's really there because you're sampling the binomial distribution